I'm going to use this. Oh, good, it works. Um, well, uh, John Milholm uh, has uh, told you a bit about a meeting uh, where Patricia Taboada convinced the energy people about the importance of women. Um, further on to that, um, we also had a meeting, representatives from the Women for Science program, had a meeting with the energy working group of IANIS. There were four of a, a women present, um, myself included, and we made a very passionate appeal to have a chapter on gender and women and energy and water uh, in this book that Mr. Um, Milhone um, well, talked to you about. So uh, there were two meetings in which females uh, representing the sciences had to convince energy to include us in their deliberations. And I'm happy to say that our chapter is present in the book, which hopefully you will see um, shortly. Um, my uh, instructions for this presentation, I think uh, maybe have been different. I was told to speak to you about the IANIS Women Program, and so let me do that. Uh, my very short presentation is divided into three parts, the founding of it, its activities, and some of our recommendations for the academies of science. Um, the uh, Working Group for Women was formed um, fairly recently in 2010 at a meeting in Bolivia when Annika Sangers, the uh, co-chair of the Women for Science program, uh, who became, I should say, the co-chair of the Women for Science program, spoke very, very passionately about the vast underrepresentation of women in science, their lower status, their lower rates of pay, the fewer opportunities that they have as compared with their male um, colleagues. She advised the group then to consider the importance of gender and specifically the role of women in science. As a result, IANIS established the Women for Science Working Group uh, only six years ago. Now, under Annika Sanger's leadership, uh, the mission of the group was to advise and inform IANIS, its academies and its programs on gender issues and to develop strategies to enhance the status of women scientists. The Program for Science works towards the full engagement of women in science, technology, development. More specifically, it works to promote women and to develop actions that increase the visibility of the contributions of women scientists and engineers in the region and provide women with opportunities for networking by means of the website, and more recently, by producing research publications. The working group consists of focal points, or representatives, from each of the member academies of IANIS, and we meet annually in a member country that has agreed to sponsor the meeting uh, and provide local venues. The delegates, or focal points, uh, a term that I have never been familiar with, uh, are chosen by their own academies who are responsible for their arrangements. So far, to just briefly tell you that we have met in Mexico in 2011, in Panama in 2012, in Chile in 2013, uh, and in Canada in 2014. Last year was Bolivia, to 15, and we are meeting later this year in Venezuela. Our two-day meetings are spent on committed discussion and planning to develop programs that our committee can turn into action. Our group, 
as any voluntary organization, faces severe constraints. Most of our focal points are mature and highly professional members of their scientific disciplines. And as such, they run laboratories, staff hospitals, and several hold very high decision-making positions in various levels of government and industry. Even those at pre-retirement ages are still actively committed to research activities. As with women in other areas, work and life and its balance is still a major issue. Thus, women have very little time to commit to voluntary activity. Given these constraints, it is truly remarkable that our group has had so many important achievements in a relatively short space of time. Uh, can I have the other slide, please, the one that shows our activities? Um, okay, Th this just tells you, shows you what we have accomplished. Um, we have concentrated on developing programs that promote and enhance women scientists. One of its first hugely successful project was to produce a book featuring the stories of successful women scientists in the Americas. Uh, that was in the first slide, I think. Can you turn that back, please? Yes, Women in Science in the Americas, Their Inspiring Stories was the title of that. And while we're on this slide, our second book, which is much more recent, is on young women scientists. Now, the aim of the book was to provide role models for young women. Each academy designated a notable woman of science who was then interviewed by an academy member or by a program focal point for that academy. The interview was guided by a series of questions designed by our committee and a total of 16 stories with photographs and a brief introductory chapter was published under the title Women in Science in the Americas, Their Inspiring Stories. And when you look at that book, you will recognize each woman who represents a country of the Americas as a very famous, well-known, highly achieving female scientist. It was widely distributed, and to date, there have been hundreds of thousands of hits on our website. Following its success, we then interviewed a young woman scientist from each member country, and that collection, Young Women Scientists, was recently published, and it was designed to display the talents and abilities of contemporary young women scientists. Now, recognizing that our limited knowledge of the numbers and roles of women members in our academies, we developed a survey to provide these data. Results which by and large indicated the underrepresentation of women, and can I have the numerical table, please? That was the first one. Uh, no, it's. I don't know how to bring this back. There we are. Okay. Uh, these are the results of the survey that that um, that we conducted. Um, it indicates the serious underrepresentation of women members. Only 18% of all academy members were women. Uh, we analyzed uh, the results in greater detail, 
and um, our survey was published and is also available on our website. Now, uh, IAP has funded a similar survey of other academies around the world. Uh, and this was carried out by the South African Academy of Science. And their recent report was inco has incorporated our data on the Americas, which we produced in our earlier study. And as you can see here by the um, the numbers, the average total is only 18%. Um, percent. Uh, and compared to the much larger numbers. Now, there are a number of, of countries that do better with women academy members than others. Um, one mentions, for example, Cuba as an example. Uh, Panama is a, an example as well, but they, they, they have a, an application system rather than a vetting assessment system of membership which explains their higher rates. All the other countries have a, uh, academies have a much stronger assessment procedure. Um, but you can see by the numbers that there is a great deal to be done in this area. Now, in addition, our other activities, uh, we have worked together with the Energy uh, and Water Committees to create that chapter, which I um, told you about. We have also presented, uh, we've also created some videos that demonstrates the work of women scientists. Uh, that has been conducted in Mexico and in Chile and will likely be done in other countries as well. Several member academies have created women for science committees within their own structure which did not exist before our working group was established and began proselytizing for women's committees in individual academies. And several academies have added women for science websites including Chile, Argentina, and Colombia. We have recently also created a $10,000 prize for a young woman. The first winner was a young scientist from Venezuela, and the second one uh, was recently chosen is from Cuba. In the foreseeable future, our working group will be planning a mentorship program for students and further work on developing videos. We now have 19 member academies as several new member countries have, um, have joined us, including Honduras, Ecuador, and Uruguay. Uh, some of these new um, countries and their focal points have already uh, been making important contributions to our work. Now, finally, let me just say a word or two about the recommendations that we would like to bring forward to the academies of science. In the first instance, to establish numerical goals for the representation of women in terms of membership contests, call for positions, forums, in fact any activity that an academy is responsible for should now also include a significant number of women. We don't want to set goals, we don't want to set numbers, we leave it to the sense of each academy to work diligently towards a more equitable numerical representation of women members. Uh, we also encourage and reinforce national committees. We suggest that each member country uh, support the different programs and activities of the academies. We want to enhance the visibility of women scientists on websites of the academies to reflect their scientific careers and achievements, and to include not only academy members, but also other highly distinguished women scientists, doctors, and engineers. And taking a page out of our IANIS working group, 
Each country now has the ability, the technical ability, to produce their own bibliographies, their own biographies, their own books, their own websites, YouTube videos, etc. So we encourage, therefore, that all of our member countries uh, sort of keep women as a focus in all their activities. By way of conclusion, I just want to share some personal comments. As you can see, uh, I am, to speak kindly of myself, a, a mature woman of some years. Uh, so I've had a lifelong career as a professional social scientist. I've spent my entire life in academia as a professor of anthropology, specializing in Caribbean studies, and also in the attempt to analyze and understand inequality and especially racism. Some of my published work is academic in nature, but a lot of it is also applied and practical and is aimed at helping societies and social structure change. During the course of this, I've, of course, interacted with hundreds of colleagues and probably thousands of students, uh, as well as people all over the world. And I can honestly say, uh, and I hope our IANIS uh, executives are listening, I can honestly say that the working, working within IANIS on the Women for Science Working Group has been one of the most rewarding experiences of my professional life. The ability to engage and network with mainly women, but we do have male members, uh, I want to recognize uh, certainly Marcos, who is always with us uh, from Brazil, and Patricio Felmer from Chile. So we, we don't exclude um, men <laughs> from our deliberations. But we have generated a level of honesty and openness that is rarely achieved in most of the groups and organizations that we tend to be part of, certainly that I've been part of all my life. And the reason for this is because we women usually find ourselves in a numerical minority and not occupying the higher positions of decision-making authority. And we're often the recipients of sexist jokes, comments, and behavior. And finally, of course, our IANIS focal points are all committed, generous, and lovely human beings. And it therefore has been a privilege for me to work with this organization and these people. Thank you.